Well, good morning, folks. I'm here with a friend of mine, Bob Lowe from FJ Neal Tackle. You may not know Bob, but you know the brand of tackle they got, tied right rigs and gummy shads. And Bob, people live in Long Island all their life, and look at this sunrise we get. A lot of people never see this. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. A lot of people, they sit there and commute all day long, and they don't get to see. You come down Ocean Parkway in the morning, no traffic, and you get to see this. Well, we got a real brisk morning, and what we're going to be looking to do is catch some stripers, the forerunner stripers in full heat. May find a couple of keepers, we may not, but it's all about action towards the end of the season. Before you put the boats away, we're going to be using uh, little shad baits, gummy shads and assorted shad baits, trying to dupe some of these schoolies into an exciting, fast-paced show. So stay with us. We're going to take a little commercial break. When we come back, we'll be catching some fish right out here with my buddy Bob, right here on the fish line. We'll be right back. All right, folks, it's time for the Northeast Premier Fishing Show, The Fishing Line with Rich Johnson, now in our second decade. The Fishing Line is brought to you by Marine Formula Stable. To prevent the damaging effects of ethanol in your fuel tank, use Marine Formula Stable. And by the Long Island Power Authority. More choice, better service, LIPA. And by the Fishing Report Hotline. 24-hour fishing reports by phone when you need them. Oh, fish on, here we go. Hey, folks, when I'm not out here doing the Fishing Line television show, guess what I'm doing? I'm on WGBB 1240 AM bringing you the Fishing Line radio show every Saturday afternoon with up-to-the-minute fishing reports throughout the show, weekly guest experts sharing their tips and secrets, and we take your phone calls live on the air. If you want to know where the fish are, not where they were, join me every Saturday afternoon at 4 p.m. on WGBB 1240 AM radio for the Fishing Line. This is Ed's boat. It costs big bucks. Yeah. This is new Marine Formula Stay Bill Ethanol Treatment. It costs a few bucks. When Ed fuels up, he doesn't add new Marine Formula Stay Bill. Nah. Too bad. Because the ethanol in his fuel caused engine deposits and corrosion. Now it won't start. And repairs are big bucks. Poor Ed. Marine Formula Stay Bill would prevent that. With twice the corrosion protection, four times the cleaners. Now when you fill up and when you store, start with Stay Bill. Hey, sportsmen, it's time to celebrate the great outdoors indoors at the 32nd Annual Toyota World Fishing and Outdoor Exposition, running Thursday through Sunday, March 5th to the 8th at Rockland Community College in Suffern, New York. See hundreds of exhibitors with all the latest fishing and hunting gear, plus boats, lodges, and much more. Learn from the experts, including Hank Parker, Alton Jones, and Shaw Grigsby. Enter to win great prizes. It's aisle after aisle of fun and excitement for the entire family. Plus, check out the full line of 2009 Toyota trucks. It's the biggest and the best, but it's only Thursday through Sunday. Don't miss it. Hey, fishermen, for the most comprehensive reports and fishing information on the Internet, log on to www.thefishingline.com. Thefishingline.com has fishing reports for boats, surf, freshwater, or party and charter boats for Long Island's tri-state area. Now you can listen to the Fishing Line radio show live on the web, Saturdays at 4 p.m., or see video clips of the TV show. Know where they are, not where they were, with thefishingline.com. What you need to know in fishing, it's www.thefishingline.com. A dawning day in late autumn can be brilliant. As cold night air lends its crispness to the new day, colors are bright, clear, they seem in focus, as the subtle pastels of summer give way to the sharper edge of fall and the onset of winter not far off. Birds fill the sky as eternal hope fills the souls of anglers with the prospect of bending a rod and feeling your line come tight a few last times. You know precious time on the water is drawing to a close for yet another season. The full striper run along our metro area shores can be fast and furious, not knowing whether the next fish is 20 inches or 20 pounds. Line siders are putting on the feed bag for another migration on their trip home. That's what I like about these gummies. You can work them quick along the surface. You can bounce them off the bottom. You know, that's key when it comes to fishing shad baits, you know, because these shad baits have a lead head in them. Some are molded, some have these, uh, special lock systems that the gummy sheds have on their heads. But a swim bait is designed to swim in a straight line. So once you establish a depth that you want to fish these shads at, you want to keep the retrieve 
at that depth if you can. If that doesn't work, let it sink a little bit deeper or work it just under the surface and find where it is because bait fish don't normally swim like this. So it's not like you don't see me doing all kinds of crazy jigging with my rod. I want to find where the fish are and keep a good steady cruising with the bait. Right, Bob? That's it, Rich. Necessary looking for monster bass today. The season's almost over. It's almost time to put the boat away. You're going to get these flocks and acres of birds and bass coming down. It's time to get the last licks in that's before it. winter sets in, right? And that's what we're before doing. Before the long, cold winter. And basically, the bluefish are just about. Oh, that's a nice fish right there, Bob. Look at that. That's going to be a coastal keeper. Get my thumb in his mouth. Look at that. 25, that's 26 go. inch fish. Look at that. Beauty of the gummy shads. Look at that. Right, right in the, the mouth with those sharp hooks. Look at that. Beautiful. That's the rainbow trout color. We'll show them all the colors a little bit later, yeah. but that's a nice fish there, Bob. Beautiful. Look at that, huh? Oops, easy. Nice. We'll throw this one back in here. Get a few more of them. You got one a little bit deeper that time? You want the bake a little bit deeper? That was a little deeper yeah. and I was just steady that time. So like you said, you just have to see what, what they're going to be hitting on and what level and stick with that. And a lot of this is really run and gun fishing. Get a couple of fish, the school moves, you go get them again, and you have to be considerate of your fellow fishermen and fishing women out here because you can't be cutting through these schools and cutting people's off. off. It can be a zoo out here sometimes, particularly in a, a tight spaced inlet. So be courteous, be kind. There's plenty of fish out here for everybody to catch now. Again, we caught one fish, took a minute or two to get him in, time to go Time to go. And if you notice, and the camera will point up at the sky here for you, a lot of the birds now are high up in the sky. You see how they're just circling like this? They're just high and circling, and the flock of birds seem to come off the water now and are high in the sky. It means the fish have driven the bait down. Mm -hmm. You may want to go to uh, diamond jigs, or we can use a heavier gummy shed and get it down the bottom. But when they're up high looking like that, they can see the bait. The bait just hasn't been pushed high enough to the surface for them to feed on it. So, uh, again, time to make another move. You don't catch a couple of fish and a couple of casts, make a move and follow the birds. We're going to keep working this outside edge of the inlet. We may even go back to the jetty and fish in the inlet. And the tides are going to, we're on the incoming tide. Most game fish prefer the outgoing, but you know what, in a fall like this, tide really doesn't make that big a difference. Just get out, just fish when you can fish, right Bob? You have to pick your days with the weather can't ask for a better day than this. This is beautiful. Right, let's make another move and get up on the birds over here. Right. You know, Bob, and you folks at home, a big part of your arsenal late in the fall before the season closes as these peanut bunker and baby snappers come pouring out of the bays of the New York metro area should be these swim baits or what we call plastic sheds, right? That's right, Rich. You see a lot of different styles, a lot of different brands out there. Some of them have the smooth bodies like that. You get other brands like the gummy sheds that have the molded in scales and fins. You have a large variety to choose from. And some other ones actually have the lead head and the hook molded into the plastic, which really, folks, if you think about it, you spend a lot of money doing that. It costs more money to make them, but at the same time, every time a bluefish chops off the tail or you wear them out because they get beat up by the stripers, you have to throw the whole unit away. Whereas if you have regular shad baits like gummy shads and some of the real inexpensive ones you buy at some of the worm bars at the outdoor shows, you know, you can just change the tails onto the heads, they actually change the color of the head depending on what the bait fish are, because sometimes a white head works better than a brown one or a black one. But the key to all this is to make sure that your bait is swimming straight. That's the key, isn't it? That's right, Rich. It's really important. Some people do have problems threading them on like that. Um, the gummy sheds do have a channel built into them where you mm -hmm. can just hook it right through the channel, and it's a foolproof method. Otherwise, you need to really take your time and be sure you do it properly. Now, to do that, we're going to take our lead head, the point of the hook, we're going to come right into the front of the shad bait. We're just going to slide it through and slide it up the hook. And you want to come out the middle of the back. It takes a little practice so you know how far in you want to go depending on the shank of the hook to the lead head. And the key is you want that bait swimming nice and straight 
just like you would a plastic worm in fresh water. That's it. Now, another great thing about the gummy shell, besides the wild colors you got, you got some fantastic colors we'll look at in a second, is this molded head. The molded head has a channel running through the bottom, does two things. It helps to cut water and swim better. And you wouldn't think that it has anything to do with the sink rate or the fall rate or the drop weight, we call it is this actually catches water and allows this to actually sink a little bit slower than a regular lead head and that can make a difference whether it sinks like a stone or sinks like a fish. That's right, that's right. Also, tell us about the channel locking. Here. Well that locks on, uh, as you know, whenever you use plastic bodies a lot, they you catch a few fish on them, they tend to get a little loose and the body will slide back and it won't right. swim properly. This, as you put it on, it really helps hold the body right up against the head, gives it the right swimming action you need. You got some great colors. Why don't you hand me the baby weak fish and that baby striper, please, there, Bob. We're well, looking at it. you got a great little striper pattern. Striped bass, all predators, they will feed upon their own young as they come out of the bays. All right, we have a baby, well, this is actually a rainbow trout, but it's the closest thing to a weak fish that we have so far with the colors of purples, the pinks in there, and the yellow. These are two great colors, and you really should have in your arsenal shad baits from three inches all the way up to five and six inches everybody makes them all the gummy shads are really what we're using today and really one of my favorites now we're going to take a quick commercial break you have to get back to work because only so much time neil's going to let you go fishing that's right, all right unfortunately. Hey, Bob, thanks for being with us on the show today i appreciate it it was a pleasure when we come back from this uh, commercial break i'll be out on the water fishing solo as we finish up today's show here on the fish line stay with us we've got some more exciting action coming for you right after this oh fish on here we go hey folks but I'm not out here doing the Fishing Line television show. Guess what I'm doing? I'm on WGBB 1240 AM bringing you the Fishing Line radio show every Saturday afternoon with up-to-the-minute fishing reports throughout the show, weekly guest experts sharing their tips and secrets, and we take your phone calls live on the air. If you want to know where the fish are, not where they were, join me every Saturday afternoon at 4 p.m. on WGBB 1240 AM radio for the Fishing Line. This is Ed's boat. It costs big bucks. Yeah. This is new marine formula stable ethanol treatment. It costs a few bucks. When Ed fuels up, he doesn't add new marine formula stay bill. Yeah. Too bad. Because the ethanol in his fuel caused engine deposits and corrosion. Now it won't start. And repairs are big bucks. Poor Ed. Marine formula stay bill would prevent that. With twice the corrosion protection, four times the cleaners. Now when you fill up and when you store, start with stay bill. Hey, fishermen! For the most comprehensive reports and fishing information on the Internet, log on to www.thefishingline.com. Thefishingline.com has fishing reports for boats, surf, freshwater, or party and charter boats for Long Island's tri-state area. Now you can listen to the Fishing Line radio show live on the web, Saturdays at 4 p.m., or see video clips of the TV show. Know where they are, not where they were, with thefishingline.com. What you need to know in fishing, it's www.thefishingline.com. We were able to convince the folks at FJ and Neil to let Bob play hooky a little longer and we'll get back to fishing with Bob in just a minute. But first, let's take a look at what you may want to bring with you in the way of a full striper run arsenal. Now earlier in the show we showed you the shad baits, gummy shads and some of the baits you can use. Another important part of your fall arsenal or real late season arsenal are small baits such as small bucktails and diamond jigs. These fish tend to go from one to another and back again so you want to make sure you have all of them with you. Bucktails from a half ounce running right up to an ounce, ounce and a quarter. A lot of times you don't need anything really much bigger than that. Diamond jigs from a half ounce to one ounce, up to two ounces. I might bring a three ounce with me. If I'm only diamond jigging, I bring this one. But you know, when I'm doing this late fall action for a lot of schoolie fish, I like bringing an assortment of baits. Have them all tucked away and have them all nice and organized and you're ready to go. This is all part of the arsenal. Gummy shad, bucktails and small diamond jigs. And here, I've got a small bucktail on. This is what I went to just to get down and see what's going on. A lot There's of small bass in here. All real small bass coming through to run. And you get certain times of the day where you can find some larger fish and get down to the bottom to get them. Yeah, small, look at that. Little small little white bucktail, it's all it takes. We're marking a lot of fish on the screen here, so we'll just keep banging through here and see what we can do, Bob. But take your gummy shad. Now, just because you're using a shad bait doesn't mean you can't bucktail off the bottom like a bucktail. You don't exactly. have to cast and swim it. So you work the gummy shad in the bottom. We'll see what happens with the bucktail. And by having two different baits going, the fish will tell us which one they want. 
Right. And then we'll, we'll go over to that one, you know. Switch so far to having it. that late fall arsenal with you, small baits, you know. There we go. There's no, oh, there he is. Still got a couple hours left of the incoming tide, so the tide really doesn't make much of a difference. There we go. Whatever last slick she can get in before the season ends, you know? <laughs> it's a long winter. It sure is. Just like that. There we go. Nice. Let's see what happens again. Are you working on just hopping it off the bottom? I'm just bouncing it off the bottom, Rich. It's time for our tip of the week, brought to you by Boaters World, boating and fishing for the world. I'm here with Captain Joel LeCicero, one of the premier installers of electronics in the metropolitan area for marine electronic technicians. And today, Joe, we're installing a fire extinguisher, right? We are. And what are our steps to do that? First, you take your fire extinguisher with your bracket. Make sure that it clears the area where you'd like to put it, where you think you'd like to put it on the location. Take your bracket off your fire extinguisher, put a level next to it, check for plumb, which is straight up and down. Mark your holes in your bracket, take your bracket away, drill your two holes, and then you're going to chamfer the two holes, which means put a bevel to them, so when you put the screws in, Rich, that you don't lift the gel coating and hurt the uh, integrity of the gel coat and make a shoddy job. So we're basically countersinking the holes, and then what are we going to do? We're going to apply some silicone, so we don't have any leakage into each hole, and a little bit on the back of the bracket so we we'll help uh, adhere it to the hull, and then put our screws in, put our fire extinguisher into our bracket, snap the uh, bracket in place, right. and we're done. And that's it, Joe. It's secure, ready to go, our boat safe and ready. Secure, ready to go, right. Thanks, Joe. And that's our boat as well, tip of the week. Oh, fish on, here we go. Hey, folks, when I'm not out here doing the fishing line television show, guess what I'm doing? I'm on WGBB 1240 AM, bringing you the fishing line radio show every Saturday afternoon with up to the minute fishing reports throughout the show, weekly guest experts sharing their tips and secrets, and we take your phone calls live on the air. If you want to know where the fish are, not where they were, join me every Saturday afternoon at 4 p.m. on WGBB 1240 AM radio for the fishing line. This is Ed's boat. It costs big bucks. Yeah. This is new Marine Formula Stay Bill ethanol treatment. It costs a few bucks. When Ed fuels up, he doesn't add new Marine Formula Stay Bill. Nah. Too bad. Because the ethanol in his fuel caused engine deposits and corrosion. Now it won't start, and repairs are big bucks. Poor Ed. Marine Formula Stay Bill would prevent that, with twice the corrosion protection, four times the cleaners. Now when you fill up and when you store, start with Stay Bill. Hey, sportsmen, it's time to celebrate the great outdoors indoors at the 32nd Annual Toyota World Fishing and Outdoor Exposition, running Thursday through Sunday, March 5th to the 8th at Rockland Community College in Suffern, New York. See hundreds of exhibitors with all the latest fishing and hunting gear, plus boats, lodges, and much more. Learn from the experts, including Hank Parker, Alton Jones, and Shaw Grigsby. Enter to win great prizes. It's aisle after aisle of fun and excitement for the entire family. Plus, check out the full line of 2009 Toyota trucks. It's the biggest and the best, but it's only Thursday through Sunday. Don't miss it. Hey, fishermen, for the most comprehensive reports and fishing information on the Internet, log on to www.thefishingline.com. Thefishingline.com has fishing reports for boats, surf, freshwater, or party and charter boats for Long Island's tri-state area. Now you can listen to the Fishing Line radio show live on the web, Saturdays at 4 p.m., or see video clips of the TV show. Know where they are, not where they were, with thefishingline.com. What you need to know in fishing, it's www.thefishingline.com. When it comes to casting light baits like gummy shads and small bucktails, remember it's only an ounce, ounce and a half, maybe a two ounce or three ounce diamond jig at the most, but for the most part light baits mean you want to go with spinning tackle. I'm using a seven foot one piece spinning rod, I've got a 17 pound test silver thread, I like using monofilament when I'm using the spinning tackle, if I use conventional I'll go to the braided line which would be the tough line XP, but for the most part it's small reels small spinning tackle, light stuff, it still has enough backbone to handle some quality fish because you will come across schools of quality fish in this situation. When it comes to conventional tackle, still seven foot one piece, here I'm using a graphite rod, the spinning was fiberglass, small bait casting reels, drags tend to be a little bit better than the spinning tackle, but then again, you're not talking a lot of big fish this particular time of year. It can happen, but for the most part, 
it really isn't happening. The key here, though, is I'm using a shock leader. If I'm using light tackle, I want to make sure I have a shock leader to my baits. Now, here I've got a snap. This is a tied right snap. And for the most part, I would usually tie direct if I knew I had quality fish. But actually, when I'm fishing with a lot of schoolies, I use a snap. I like to change baits a lot. I get a little bit lazy. I'm not really practicing what I preach. But for the most part, you can get away with this. And I got a 40-pound test silver thread shock leader, brand new silver thread shock leader material to a small barrel swivel. This is really all you need. You can go out there and get in and bang in on a lot of fish as the season comes to a close. Let's get back to some more of that fishing right now. Let's see what we got. Oh, a little striper. Use the old hookout tool here like this. Comes right off. All right. Beautiful. Not bad. We are still marking and getting bounced around pretty well, but might as well just keep jigging. So, Bob, FJ tackles. Right here on Long Island, Lindenhurst, right? Right in Lindenhurst, right. Like I said, we've been around for 45 years. Um, we don't sell directly to the shops themselves, but uh, we, we have sell the jobbers and the distributors. Exactly, who will sell to the shops. And the brand that most people are familiar with, they wouldn't know FJ Neal by name, but they would know Dolphin Tackle and they would know Atlantis Tackle, but you kind of faded those out, and now the big thing is the Tide Right exactly. rigs, which you have, right? It's a new line we started up a couple of years ago. We're trying to target a little more for the local tri-state area for the saltwater market. We have you know, high-quality hooks on them. We um, uh, oh, we striped bass rigs, bluefish rigs, sea bass and porgy rigs. Fluke. We're also getting into um, bucktails, and right. we have different surf leaders and dressed hooks for replacement. Even a lot of the shops you go into, you see the for fluke, the chrome balls with right. the, you know, maybe they're not labeled, they're bulk, but a lot of that is our merchandise also. Oh, you just, cool. A lot of it is bulk you see in the stores, you don't even realize it's ours. And it's great because it's a Long Island based company serving in the New York metropolitan, New York, Connecticut, New Jersey area, but you also sell your products around the country too. Throughout the country and we also export out of the country. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, down south, down Florida, Texas, even California, we've got quite a few good customers. And now Tide Right, which is a bright orange card in your tackle shops, folks, is making uh, barrel swivels and the snaps that we use on the fishing line because it's, it's a much higher quality grade uh, wire than some of the ones you buy, like, you know, a dozen for a dollar or something like that, right? Exactly. We even in this past year expanded the Tide Right line into snelled hooks. So we're going everything for this market. It's really been taking off very well for us. Very good feedback from from the fishermen. And we're proud to be associated with it too. And it's been, I think, Neil's been with us uh, 10 years through our radio I show so. as an advertiser. So what we're going to do is, we kind of drifted off the fish. We're going to go back up to tip of the jetty and uh, drift over these schools of bait that we're marking on the fish. Although I see some nice marks here. Try it one more time here. There we go. Woo! This one's fighting hard, Bob. Well, I tell you, at this time of the year, even these little fish, they hit these little jigs and gummy sheds and stuff like that like yellow money or something. They I hit mean, them hard. They are mean for this size. Come on. <laughs> there we go. Look at the colors in that. Beautiful colors. Gorgeous fish. Right back. But boy, they hit this thing like, like it's personal. They really slam these things. We're really putting on that feed bag. Ooh, man. Ooh, man is right, folks. You know, a few times each down. season, unsafe and stupid behavior by some in the water can put angles in danger. While filming our show, a boat out of Jones Inlet gave us a prime example of what not to do. With my camera boat only 15 feet away, this 29-footer was ready to stupidly cut between our boats. Once I got his attention, he stopped, still way too close, then after casting, proceeded to blow right by us anyway, catching my line and almost stripping my reel. Please, use some common sense on the water. There's plenty of fish for everyone. Now let's get back to some more fishing. Woo, baby! Little schooling. 
And that's what this is mostly going to be here, folks, is some schoolies. If you get your bait down the bottom, we may find some keepers in here. We've had fish to 38 inches as well, Bob. But this is really the full run as they really start to take off here to go to their winter home. Look at this. A lot of these fish are going to be in this 22 to 25 inch range, maybe 27, 28. Nice little cute schoolies here. Put it right back in there. And this is really my favorite time of year here, Bob, because it's just nonstop action. You can see the birds all over the place. And there's a lot of people getting on that train right now, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's always exciting when you get to see the birds working. It gets the blood going. Absolutely. What we're doing is just taking our gummy shads and getting them down below the school. There's a lot of fish break on the surface all around us as well. And what we're going to do is, depending on the wind and the tide, we then have to go up and make another drift. Now we've got, feels like a west wind coming on. So we sh looks like we've got a west wind coming on here. So we're going to go up and make another drift here. All right, that's what it is. Now we'll get into, we'll get into, uh, how to approach your birds in the schools, because you're seeing a lot of people, Bob, do a lot of crazy things, driving right through them and all that kind of stuff. They go right, right through the school and break it up and everything right. goes down again. That's right, so we want to go up easy. We're going to actually go up this way, so the wind will push us into it, and we'll get to drift yeah. through the entire school. So let's make a move, Excellent. we'll go around and come up on the other side. So what we want to do is we want to spin around this way. And we're going to go back up this way, Bob. And we want to spin up on this side and let the west wind we'll push us in. Out. We got, still have incoming tides, so the tide's coming this way, the wind's going the other way. And that should give us a nice slow drift right through them. Great. This is just going to be nonstop action here. Look at all those birds. Well, we took a few more drifts and caught some fish while sharing some laughs knowing it was nearly done. Winds and storms in the days after we filmed Close 2003 even earlier than expected, but hey, don't go anywhere. We have plenty of action left for you in 2004 with months ahead of fishing our tri-state waters together. Stay with us every Saturday morning, and I'll see you folks next week right here on the water for the Fishing Line. Hey folks, if you'd like to add this episode or any episode of the Fishing Line to your library collection, just follow the directions on the screen. The Fishing Line with Rich Johnson was brought to you by Marine Formula Stable. To prevent the damaging effects of ethanol in your fuel tank, use Marine Formula Stable. And by the Long Island Power Authority. More choice, better service, LIPA. And by the Fishing Report Hotline. 24-hour fishing reports. By phone when you need them.